Hey guys, welcome back. For today's video tutorial, I'm gonna have a look over a new sensor that is ITG3200. Now, we have done a lot of sensors in our previous videos, so I'm gonna introduce to a new digital sensor that is ITG3200. To gain more knowledge about this sensor, let's have a look over the website controlleverything.com and now here search for this particular sensor and let's see what we got here. We got that ITG3200 is a 16-bit 3-axis MEMS gyro angular rate sensor. So it's a gyrometer in short term and what we can say about the features as you can see on my screen. Now you can also purchase this sensor from this very site and I will be moving forward with a lot of options regarding this sensor. Now I will be interfacing the sensor ITG3200 with a Raspberry Pi and for that I will be requiring a code of Python. So for that resource tabs comes into the picture and here comes the Python I code sample for ITG3200. Now you can download this code as a zip file from here and also you can have the opportunity to download the code from github.com and the repository from where you can get the code is control everything community that's the official repository and now what do we require is some hardware so that we can put it together and make some connections for the video let's have a look over that this here is our sensor that is ITG3200 and now this is a Raspberry Pi and these are the GPR pins which you are able to see on my screen now, how do we connect a sensor, a Raspberry Pi and a lot of other I2C devices and make this connection a lot easier to follow up? So the answer is this I2C sheet. Now this is available on the website controleverything.com and gently place this shield over the GPIO pins of our Raspberry Pi. Now what do we need to connect the sensor and the I2C shield and here comes the connecting cable. Make this connection among the sensor and the cable and while making this connection one thing has to be sure that the ground wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the sensor similarly for the I2C shield. This has to be followed strictly and it's highly recommended. Now we need to power up our Raspberry Pi and here comes a micro USB cable into the picture. Gently put it over the power jack. Now we need to connect our Raspberry Pi and the sensor with an internet connection. There are two ways to do it. First of all, we need an Ethernet cable and gently place it over the Ethernet jack. In case if you don't have the cable, you can also use an adapter, nano adapter Wi Fi module. Now, this is very useful and it can save you time. Now, we are done with the connections part. What we require is our code so that we can have a look over it, explanation, interfacing, and see how it works with our sensor. Let's have a look over that. Now it's time to interface the Python code with the sensor and for that log into github.com and here we have to search for the repository that is control everything community uh, which you are able to see on my screen. Now get over it and here itg3200 and here comes the required sensor and this is the code we are looking forward to export. But before that, let's have a look over the instructions for this Python code. We have to download and install SMBus library on the Raspberry Pi and the steps are being provided on this way link. Let's have a look uh, over this link so that we can implement the instructions a lot easier. So this is how, this is an example as you can see, this is a command, all the different types of instructions being provided here. You can do it carefully and the installation is must. It's highly recommended to use that before running the code and this is the command how to run your python code now get back to the python code and here we go it's a .py extension file the first thing you notice that we have imported smbus and time libraries and the address of the sensor is 0x68 now in the writing part section uh, we have to send some commands and power management register is 0x3 and the command we sent here is power up pll with, with x gyro reference and the command for that is 0x01 now in the second part we have selected the DLPF register that is 0x16 and the command for gyro full scale range is plus minus 2000 dps that is 0x18. Writing command is here. There is a sleep or delay for 0.5 seconds and after that we have to read some data after that we have sent some instructions. 
Now we have to read data back from 0x1d and we have read 6 bytes of data as you can see including x, y and z axis for gyroscope. After that we have all the values, we have the conversion formulas for the gyroscopic in x, y and z axis which is according to the details being provided in the data sheet of ITG3200. As we are done with the calculations part, we have to display the output on the screen and for that uh, this is the command as you can notice on my screen. It's the x, y and z axis rotation and we have formatted it according to the raw values uh, the percentage d is there. So this is how the code, Python code works with the sensor. Now let's see how it works on the practicality. Let's see. Well, we have to check the practicality of this Python code. So the working part is here. Well, for that, copy this entire Python code. Copy it and open up the terminal for the Raspberry Pi here. Create a new file, itt3200.py as you can see on my screen. Uh, Sorry, correction is there. Now it's done. Now here, paste the code, save the code, and this is the command to run the code as you can see on my screen. And here we go. So when I try to rotate the sensor, there will be some changes in the x, y, and z axis rotation as you can notice on my screen. So here it works. This is the reason why it works and how it works. So now we have to check the reasons why we use this sense, the benefits, applications and a lot more. So let's check it. So till now we have seen the explanation of the code working and connections part of this particular sensor. So the ITG3200 is the world's first single chip digital output 3-axis MEM as gyro IC optimized for gaming. 3D mice and 3D remote control applications. The part features enhanced bias and sensitivity temperature stability, reducing the need for user calibrations. Low frequency noise is lower than previous generation device, simplifying application development and making for more responsive remote controls. Due to this wide features, it's applicable in a lot of applications like motion enabled game controllers, motion based portable gaming, 3D mice and 3D remote controls, no touch UI, health and sports monitoring and a lot more. This sensor can be purchased from the website controleverything.com and you can get the code from the resource tab and from there you can download it. You can also get the code from github repository that is control everything community. So as we are done with all the requirements for this particular sensor ITG 3200. I just would like to make it clear that in case if you are in a kind of thought that you are not able to understand any part of this video, any section, you can put your queries on the controleverything.com and put your comments on the community page of this particular website. Now for blogs and articles which are relevant to this video, you can blog or post me on instructables.com and also if you have interested or want more video tutorials like this, you can subscribe our YouTube channel. So I hope you enjoyed this video and have yourself a good one. Thanks a lot for watching.